M&M's bottom loading valve system addresses the excessive downtime experienced when an upper IBOP fails on a top drive unit. The average downtime is six to eight hours for replacing the upper IBOP valve. The M&M bottom loading valve system allows the replacement of the internal valve components without removing the upper IBOP from the top drive system. The feature allows the rig to be back in full operation in about one hour. This instructional video identifies the 10 steps necessary to repair the upper IBOP of the M&M bottom loading canister guard system. Step 1. Ensure the upper IBOP is in the open position, locking the canister in place. The stem links engage the stems and prevent the canister from falling when lower IBOP is removed. Utilizing the existing rig procedures, break out and then remove the lower IBOP. The lower IBOP pin nose is configured to hold in place the upper IBOP canister. Therefore, moderate precautions should be taken when handling the lower IBOP. Step 2. Lower the upper IBOP and pipe handler to within 4 to 6 feet of the rig floor. Swing the pipe handler away from the upper IBOP and secure it, allowing easy access to the upper IBOP's lower box connection. Step 3. Insert the pulling tool and engage the canister by right hand rotation. Rotate the upper IBOP stems to the closed position and then jar the canister from the upper IBOP body. Remove the used canister from the pulling tool and set aside. Step 4. Thoroughly clean and perform a visual inspection of the upper IBOP body. Prepare the positioning tool. The insertion cap is simply threaded onto the pulling tool, converting it into a positioning and installation device for the canister backup into the IBOP. Step 5. Visually inspect the canister and ensure its seals are properly greased. The canister's lower seat housing has two recessed positioning slots to align with the raised positioning pins on the insertion cap. With the new canister on top of the positioning tool, you are ready to reinstall the canister. Step 6. As shown here, reinstallation of the canister is not a difficult process and does not require excessive force. The indicator pins should be used as a visual aid to properly align the canister with the stem holes and to verify that the canister is fully seated inside the valve bore. The canister is fully seated when the indicators are flush or even with the box face. It is, however, important to understand and give serious consideration to the following details. The positioning pins on the insertion cap and the recesses in the canister assure alignment of the stem link with the handle located at the bottom of the positioning tool. This tracking feature allows easy alignment of the stem link into the slide on the back of the stem. It is important to understand that dual stem IBOP has a left and right side, the body being equipped with a left and right hand stem, the canister being configured with rotational stock profiles having left and right designations. The canister and body are both marked accordingly. When the installer is facing the side of the valve body which is marked with the word face, then the markings that designate left and right correlate with the installer's left and right hands. Before installing the canister into the body, make sure the actuator and crank arms are still in the closed position. Now lift the canister into place, being careful to align the stem link with the stem, then jar the canister into the seal bore of the upper IBOP body. With the canister fully installed, rotate the ball into the open position, locking the canister in place. Now you may safely remove the positioning tool from the IBOP. Step 7. 
clean the lower IBOP's pin connection. Again, handle with care. Replace the O-ring at the very end of the pin nose. Only the O-ring at the very end is required. Step 8. Reinstall the lower IBOP as per standard rig procedures. Remember to handle the pin connection with caution and make sure it is clean. Any foreign solids between the pin nose and the canister during installation can damage the canister during torque up of the connection. Step 9. With the canister in place, reposition the pipe handler making sure to align the rollers on the actuating arm with the actuator shell. Step 10. Prepare and check the IBOP according to rig procedures such as pressure testing. It is also recommended that with the lower IBOP fully open, the upper IBOP should be cycled, open, and closed. Then with the upper IBOP in the full open position, visually look into the IBOPs with a flashlight so that you can confirm that the balls of both IBOPs are in the fully open position.